The list of cinema's great pioneers includes people like Charlie Chaplin, Steven Spielberg, Tommy Wiseau, you know, people who forever changed their profession. Today I'm adding Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige to this list. Over the past decade, Hollywood has been steamrolled by Marvel Studios, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it's all mostly thanks to Kevin Feige. And today I want to talk about how Feige forever changed the film industry. I've, I've been a Marvel fan my entire life. I've worked for Marvel for over 10 years now. And during all of that time, it was, why can't all the characters come together like they do in the comics? And about five years ago, we became Marvel Studios. We had the rights to almost all of our great, great characters. And I realized, you know what, we could do it now. First, let's explore Feige's role within Marvel currently. As the president of Marvel Studios, Feige has a hand in every film. He picks the director, he has a hand in the cast and crew, and controls the narrative. Marvel screenwriters and directors can still craft their own film as long as it fits within Feige's plan. And if you disagree with Feige's plan, you become expendable. Like Edward Norton. Like Edgar Wright. Like Patty Jenkins. Feige claims to have a film slate planned out through 2028. In late 2014, he announced five years worth of films in a single press conference. Projects such as Ant-Man were in development for seven years before release. So in addition to the normal role of producers, Feige is in charge of connecting all of these movies and maintaining a strict continuity, creating the cinematic universe. And I very much want Iron Man and Hulk and someday Thor and Captain America and Ant-Man to live and breathe in their own franchises as well. What we can do, which we've never been able to do before, because each of our most popular heroes uh, are usually trapped within other studios, but with the ones that are residing in Marvel, we'll be able to cross-pollinate and frankly just give to the movie-going audience what the comic readers have had for years, which is a Marvel Universe. With a concept as large as the MCU, there needs to be a single person guiding the entire vision, and so far it's been working. The franchise has earned over $9 billion worldwide in just eight years. And while some films such as The Incredible Hulk and Thor 2 have mixed reception, Marvel has never released a critical dud. Pixar, the previous gold standard for a high batting average in Hollywood, went 11 films before their first dud with Cars 2. Marvel has released 12 films so far, all with favorable reception. Feige's success in creating the cinematic universe has left the rest of Hollywood scrambling. Sony created a slate of sequels and spin-offs to their Amazing Spider-Man franchise, only for that universe to be cancelled when the Amazing Spider-Man 2 bombed. DC stacked all of their cards into Batman v Superman, not waiting at all to pair up their lead trio. Fun fact, not once in that film do Superman and Wonder Woman talk to each other. Not once. LEGO is now a universe. Star Wars is now a universe. Over the past month, both Hasbro and Hanna-Barbera universes were announced. Noise! Marvel and Feige changed everything. That's not to say that Feige created the shared universe concept, not at all. Sci-fi shows, literature, comic books, duh. They have all explored the concept of shared universes. But its success on the big screen, that is because of Kevin Feige. Now let's take a look at how Feige came to be the president of Marvel Studios in the first place. Feige was born in Boston in 1973, attended the University of Southern California before working with the Donner's Company as an assistant to producer Lauren Donner. During his time at the Donner Company, Feige worked on projects including the only romantic comedy I've ever enjoyed, You've Got Mail. What is that? What are you doing? You're taking all the caviar? That caviar is a garnish. Donner became the main producer on X-Men and brought Feige along as an associate producer. Three weeks after the release of X-Men, the struggling Marvel Studios brought Feige in as an executive vice president. At the time, Marvel Studios was under the leadership of Avi Arad, who had been producing television shows and movies for Marvel since the 90s. Working under Arad, Feige helped produce Marvel's early Hulk and Daredevil films, among other projects. Businessman David Maciel joined Marvel in 2004 with a bold plan for the studio to finance its own films. Through 2006, he laid the financial groundwork for Marvel's future with Arad as the face of the operation. However, Arad and Maciel disagreed on how many films to produce and which characters to use. Marvel CEO Isaac Perlmutter took Maciel's side, Arad left the studio, and his void was filled by Kevin Feige, promoted to president of production. Feige became the face of the studio, playing a heavy hand in organizing the creative crews of Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk, and he put scripts for Captain America, Thor, and the Avengers into production years before filming would start on any of those films. Listen to the characters I named that we, that we work, are working on currently, and you put them all together, there's no coincidence that that may someday equal the Avengers. 
I think. Uh... Prior to the release of The Incredible Hulk, Marvel and star Edward Norton got into severe disagreements on how the film should be edited. Norton was reportedly promised an amount of creative control that Marvel later retracted. The two parties split, Hulk was recast, and The Incredible Hulk became a lame duck Marvel film. Following the completion of the Marvel-Disney merger in 2010, Maciel left the company and Kevin Feige became the president of Marvel Studios. Feige saw the culmination of nearly a decade of work pay off when The Avengers became one of the highest grossing movies of all time. This started seven years ago when somebody asked us, listen, at Marvel, they asked us, hey, can you make the movies yourselves? Five of us in a room at Marvel Studios saying, wouldn't it be cool if we released all these movies individually and then put them all together in a big Avengers movie? And now we're here with thousands of people about to see it. It's pretty overwhelming. Phase 2, the second set of MCU films, saw Feige's control challenged from within Marvel. Of the six films released in Phase 2, several had directorial issues. Patty Jenkins left Thor 2 and Edgar Wright, after almost a decade of development, left Ant-Man, both due to creative differences, presumably with Feige's grand plan. Additionally, there were reported issues with Jon Favreau during Iron Man 2 and Joss Whedon during Age of Ultron. Feige started turning to fresher, under-the-radar directors such as James Gunn and the Russo brothers to bring a unique vision to films while staying within Feige's bullet points. We want to find filmmakers who can take what we have from the comics, sort of we, we generally outline the story and know essentially what we want to tell, but we want somebody to come and elevate it. In our meetings with the Russo brothers, they loved the idea that we were presenting to them, the 70s political thriller, and they have embraced it and improved it. Upcoming Under the Radar directors from Marvel include Scott Derrickson and Taika Waititi, co-star of Green Lantern. Oh, green. On the other side of Marvel, Isaac Perlmutter was growing tense about Feige's growing film budgets. Perlmutter is known as a frugal spender, cutting costs throughout Marvel whenever possible. As Captain America's Civil War was being developed behind closed doors, the film's budget grew with the scope of the story. Civil War was part of Feige's plan, and Feige's plan is law. When Robert Downey Jr. was given a large role in Civil War, Perlmutter was allegedly angered to the point of ordering the script be rewritten without Iron Man. The addition of the other Avengers continued expanding the budget. These tensions grew within Marvel throughout 2015. Perlmutter and the other head honchos around Marvel, collectively known as the Marvel Creative Committee, tried to get Feige to scale down Civil War. Feige, unwilling to compromise his vision, fought the committee, while Perlmutter tried to reduce Feige's budget. In the fall of 2015, Feige reportedly threatened to quit Marvel unless he be given the autonomy he felt deserved after earning billions for Disney. Disney CEO Bob Iger agreed with Feige, and Marvel Studios was separated from the rest of Marvel, operating independently and answering to Walt Disney Studios chairman Alan Horn. Marvel is weeks away from releasing Captain America's Civil War. It's the culmination of eight years of world building, and critics say it's one of the best, if not the best film Marvel Studios has ever produced, and it's tracking to have one of the biggest opening weekends of all time. With a promising lineup of upcoming films, Kevin Feige has continued to be a filmmaking trendsetter and a master of large-scale storytelling. He may not be the easiest guy to work with, and I wouldn't know, and his narrative blueprint takes priority over what any director brings to the table, but you cannot deny the impact his development of the MCU has had on the entire movie industry. Foggy and Marvel Studios will be challenged over the next half decade as they start releasing three films every year, and the amount of opposing cinematic universes continues to rise, but Foggy has earned the benefit of the doubt. Every step of the way, he has proven he knows what he's doing. He has changed Hollywood forever. In Foggy, we trust. I mean, you've got different filmmakers and, and different stars, and I mean, every film is its own little adventure. How do you maintain a consistency among all those films and among that, that universe so it feels like a unified, coherent whole? Well, it, that, that is a good definition of what the producer needs to do on those, on right. those uh, <laughs> uh, levels. Um, all of our filmmakers have a vision, have a story they want to tell for those individual movies, but they're also all into this idea of this collective grand universe that you're absolutely right has been in the comics for years. So we're not reinventing anything, we're just bringing it to the screen for the first time. And that's all I've got today. Please let's have a conversation in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like, subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already, and stay tuned for more here on TV Junkie.